Now then, we are talking about the capacity to be able to penetrate the reality of the world in the age of Dajjal because Dajjal is a master of deception Dajjal <coughs> comes with two things it's the Prophet Allah's blessing be upon him said the Antichrist comes with two things the Christian world I hope you're listening now this may be new to you the Antichrist comes with two things a river and the fire and whosoever falls in his river the cold waters of his river will have his load of sins increased and whosoever falls in his fire would have his load of sins decreased because the river symbolizes heaven and you believe that this river is actually heaven when it's not it's hell and the fire symbolizes hell and you believe that this is the road to hell when in fact no it's the road to heaven so they're all flocking and leaving Bangladesh and leaving Indonesia and leaving Pakistan and leaving Egypt and going to United States and going to Britain and France and Belgium and Canada and Australia because these are the lands of the river the green pastures this is where the wealth of the world is located and so they flock to the river not knowing that that river is a fire and your load of sins will be increased and they said no 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 why should we go back to hell Bangladesh is hell, Pakistan is hell, Indonesia is hell, <laughs> Nigeria is hell, we are going back to hell, Egypt is hell, Morocco is hell, Algeria is hell. Yes, that's hell. <laughs> they think that's the fire, when in fact it's not the fire, it's the river, it's the road to heaven. And you go back and live amongst the poor and you share with what you have with them and you live in that poverty but you stay faithful to the Lord God that's the road to the river to heaven and so we want to have the capacity to be able to penetrate reality our prophet uh, I don't know whether it's a hadith or whether it's this, the dua of one of the companions of the Prophet maybe some of you can do the research and find it for me Allahumma arina al ashiya kamahi O Allah kindly show me things as they are that I might not be deceived by what they appear to be I have been making this dua all my life yes, all my life <coughs> and so how can we penetrate reality that we're not taken for a ride for example with COVID and we put on the face mask to go in the masjid to perform prayers uh, and you make it obligatory if it's voluntary fine but if it's obligatory wh what all right do you have to make it obligatory and you have to stand up like monkeys three feet apart I don't care if you're annoyed with me at all don't bother to tell me anything because you're just like monkeys because you cannot understand the reality Dajjal is getting you to dance to his tune and we want to be able to penetrate the reality so we are not taken for a ride I have not taken the vaccine no my wife has not taken the vaccine and we are still alive <laughs> yes we are still alive we will see tomorrow what is the price they will pay for having taken the vaccine when Surah Al-Kaf came to us, it gave us in the passage of Musa alayhi salam and his encounter with Khidr, the most important passage of all in the whole Quran for methodology for studying the Dajjal, for studying the world in the Akhir zaman And this is what our world of Islamic scholarship has not done the institutions of Islamic learning the Darul Uloom 
and not producing people you a scholarship that uses this methodology <coughs> from Surah to the of the Quran that Allah speaks about someone who is the most learned of all men in Akhir Zaman and he tells Musa alayhi salam he tells Moses whom, who had said I am the most learned of all men uh, the, this is not Moses speaking this is symbolic language <laughs> he, he is speaking on behalf of his people who declare we are the elite of mankind we are the chosen of the Lord God so it is not the prophet Moses himself Allah is using Moses to represent his people and all those who follow in that road we are born superior we have a birthright of superiority over <laughs> the rest of mankind we are the elite of mankind <coughs> that evil will take you into the hellfire that, that's right and we denounce it the prophet said Allah's blessing be upon him he said, all of mankind will stand before the Lord God on judgment day as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb. When people hear this, they immediately recognize this is the truth, not that one that you're born with a birthright of superiority. You're the intellectual elite of mankind. No, no. So this is being denounced in Surah al -Kaf. Allah says, no, you are not the most learned. There's someone more learned than you. Akhir Zaman, the end time, is it that p part of this, that stage of history when this has to be pronounced powerfully. There's someone more learned than you. Conventional scholarship, listen. Traditional scholarship, listen. Classical scholarship, listen. When Akhir Zaman comes, there is someone more learned than you. There's another methodology for the pursuit of knowledge that you don't have. And if you don't come to this new methodology for the pursuit of knowledge, if you don't follow this most learned of all men, you will be at loss in Akhir Zaman. In the insan al And this scholar of all scholars, of the last age is given the name Khidr and he resembles the Messiah Jesus he resembles Jesus this is what my Orthodox Christian friend told me who is a scholar of the gospel he lives in France yeah. <coughs> this is <coughs> Uh, uh, someone who, whose name we don't know and we don't know whether he's a prophet so don't ask me that question don't waste my time please we don't know whether he's alive or dead don't waste my time by asking me those questions he's known as Khidr and when I teach the subject to children I call him Mr. Green <laughs> And Mr. Green was given this name, the Prophet said, because his knowledge is not mechanical, his knowledge is not conventional, his knowledge is like raindrops falling from the sky, which brings the dead earth back to life, which stirs the heart and changes the heart and changes the lives of people. So when he came to this barren land and he sat down, everything became green. That is scholarship. That is scholarship. That when you speak, you can touch the hearts of people and change their lives with truth which has come from Allah. Hmm? So he has the name, <laughs> Mr. Green. <laughs> My, the ch when I taught the class to the children about 20 years ago, all of them are now married. <laughs> and I told them about Mr. Green. Oh, they love this. They are, the best time I had my, was teaching that class of children. Mr. Green, Khidr alayhi salam. 
So don't ask me whether he's still alive or not. Don't ask me whether he's a prophet or not. Please go ask somebody else and leave me alone. I'm fed up of this. Allah has not identified Khidr with any person in history. I am not going to do it. You want to do it? Go your way and leave me alone. But Khidr <coughs> alayhi salam is the most learned of all men. So conventional scholarship says to Allah, I want to meet him. This is using Musa, using Moses. I want to meet this most learned of all men. And then Allah replies and said, if you want to meet him, you're going to have to humble yourself. You can't have this chip on your shoulder, you're the elite of mankind. You have to humble yourself. If you want to meet the most learned of all men, this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is what you have to do. You have to take a fish, put it in a basket, and you have to travel to the place where the two oceans meet. And when the fish jumps out of the basket and makes its way in a miraculous way into the water, that is where you'll find him. So, <laughs> Musa Islam took a young man with him and they went in search of this place. And they took a basket with some food with them. And in that basket, they also had a fish. I don't have the spiritual status to be able to give you um, an interpretation of the fish. You have to look for someone superior to me. I'm just an ordinary teacher of the Quran. I don't have that kind of scholarship, spiritual scholarship. But there are others who do have the capacity to interpret the fish. So I ask you to go to them <laughs> to get the interpretation of the fish. But this is a passage of the Quran pregnant with interpretation. That we to exp <coughs> explaining something is called tafsir, explanation. But the word of the Lord God is not such that everything can be explained. The word of the Lord God is such that he reserves part of his word which you have to interpret to understand. So not explanation but interpretation. <coughs> and uh, interpretation is what is taught here in this passage of Surah al -Kaf. If you are Christian, do please get a copy of the Quran and go to Surah al -Kaf, which is the 18th Surah and go to the passage of the encounter of Moses with Khidr, Mr. Green and you'll find and study. You might get a better understanding of the subject as a Christian than many of the Muslims themselves, okay? And so Moses said, I want to meet him. And Allah says, this is how you're going to meet him. So Moses, Musa Islam, went with a, a servant, a boy, and they traveled uh, in, search, in search of this uh, Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet. It's a very interesting story. And you're going to learn a lot in this that I'm going to give you in the next session. Concern, <coughs> concerning epistemology, concerning the methodology of preaching the truth in the end time. That when people come to you humble, with humility, with thirst in their heart, they long for the truth. You have one way to treat them and to teach them. But when they come at you with a chip on their shoulder, when they are adamant, adamant, arrogantly adamant, we have the right way. And you have to use a bulldozer to try to get them to understand that they are wrong. And still they will not accept it. For such people, there is a different way to teach them. And Khidr, Khidr alayhi salam, has informed us how to deal with them.